closer look at artificial intelligence and its potential impact on the global workforce. According to a new report, AI is set to affect nearly 40 percent of all jobs and is likely to worsen overall inequality. The report comes as business and political leaders from around the world are gathering at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. For more, we're joined by futurist and founder of Way, Sinead Bovell. Sinead, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate you mm -hmm. joining us. So walk us through this report's findings. What are some of the benefits and the risks when it comes to AI and jobs? Right, so as you had mentioned, the report did find about 40% of jobs globally are impacted or exposed to AI. Mm -hmm. That number actually goes up in advanced economies to around 60% and around 26% in lower income economies. Economies. And this is because AI is uniquely positioned to impact more cognitive-based jobs or jobs that require a bit more knowledge skills, which is why countries like the US mm. and the UK were a little bit higher in terms of the AI exposure. On the one hand, though, exposure could mean two things. AI could complement a worker's job, making mm. them more productive, and that actually drives demand for that job and the skills in that job, the human skills. Some, however, AI could make you a bit more redundant, and it's more likely to automate the tasks in your job and therefore the occupation more broadly. So it is going to be a delicate dance between capitalizing on the benefits, minimizing some of the risks. So I think this is kind of what you're getting at here, but I, I understand that this report's findings sort of reveal that wealthier economies are better equipped to uh, adopt and adapt to AI. Is that right? And what does that then mean? What's the long-term impact of that if certain economies are, are able to come out better here? Yes, that's exactly Exactly right. Wealthy economies, we know AI, it's going to drive a lot of productivity growth and gains. However, lower income economies, they don't yet have the proper digital infrastructure to be able to deploy AI at scale and therefore reap those benefits. So we might see a bit more in income inequality uh, and inequality globally. Uh, the IMF does recommend for lower income countries, focus on building digital infrastructure uh, and digital skills. Uh, and then in higher income economies, we want to make sure that we are protecting workers, social safety nets, and mm. so forth. I mean, are there specific policies we can put in place to do some of those things, to better use AI in the workforce, to avoid some of those inequalities? Absolutely. So first and foremost, every worker, I would say, needs to understand how to lean into AI and how to utilize these tools because most jobs are going to be impacted by them. But I think at a government level, there is a responsibility to help with upskilling, reskilling, working with the private sector to make sure the pipeline of skills aligns in our education ecosystems. But we also need to have broader conversations around social safety nets. So when people are perhaps transitioning between jobs and occupations, there is some support there. Uh, and finally, we can look more broadly at things like de coupling insurance and things from jobs. Mm. We know there might be a bit more flexibility in working arrangements going forward. There might be more job transition uh, and kind of periods without jobs or, or moving between some. Having your most important insurance tied to your job might not be the best idea in the future. How concerned should the average American, should people watching at home be about AI impacting their job? I think it's really important to remember it's not that AI is likely to going to come in and take your entire job. It's more so tasks within your job. And so the best thing you can do is start leaning into these AI tools, play around with them, learn how to use them, uh, and lean into them. I think that that's our best bet. And for most workers, they can expect to work with artificial intelligence, not necessarily their, their entire occupation to be automated by it. Are we seeing employers recognize this and doing mm. a good enough job to train their employees or prepare their employees for this. I see the skepticism in your face. <laughs> it is really organization by organization, yeah. and it actually it depends on where you live in the world. In Europe, yes, we see a little bit more of worker training and reskilling. Um, in America, not so much. There are some companies like AT&T that do do that, uh, but it's not necessarily the broad, widespread approach at this point in time, but it's something that we really need to consider. Mm. All right, Sinead, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your expertise on this topic yeah. that a lot of people are still wrapping their heads around.